Hello, my name is David Fox. And today, we're going to be talking about uh, automation and containerized apps using NetApp Trident, Red Hat OpenShift, and Ansible. Before we get into the details, I've got to tell everybody this is confidential information and should not be disclosed without written permission of NetApp. With that being said, let's talk about uh, some of the problems that we're solving with automation using Ansible, OpenShift, and Trident. 2018, we kicked off our Cloud One initiative uh, with the goal, goal of solving certain problems, namely the automated uh, deployment of compute, uh, automated storage configuration, and automated response to problems. Uh, Ansible is really at the core of this automation initiative. We run all of our Ansible playbooks from Ansible Tower. Uh, all these playbooks are stored in a Git repo, which Ansible Tower is ultimately pulling from. Uh, some of these playbooks are run on a per request basis, uh, vis a vis a ServiceNow portal, which then makes an API call to Ansible Tower. Other playbooks, however, are run on a schedule. Uh, our auto scale playbook, which is what we're going to be looking at today, runs on a 15 minute schedule. What autoscale is, is essentially a way to make sure that our OpenShift environment always has the compute capacity that we need to bring to bear for our containerized workloads and to also make sure that our storage backend is appropriately configured for use with Trident and with OpenShift. We run this on a schedule once every 15 minutes. We chose 15 minutes because you know, we don't see a lot of new application provisioning. We typically see several applications provision uh, throughout the day. So this isn't, you know, a case where, you know, we're getting, you know, hundreds of new applications onboarded, you know, every day, right? And so for our case, once every 15 minutes was sufficient. Of course, we could run it more often or less often. The auto scale playbooks uh, do multiple things. They orchestrate across multiple areas. Uh, we use the Ansible playbook to query Splunk to get a current feel for how our resources are being utilized. And then depending on that output, we then orchestrate across ServiceNow for creating CMDB artifacts, AWS or NetApp HCI to create the compute, OpenShift to bring the compute into the cluster, and NetApp uh, cluster uh, data on tap to make sure that Trident uh, can actually uh, access the the volumes that uh, that have been created by Trident on our new compute. So our export policy being a great example. In addition to that, we also set up things like uh, monitoring with uh, Xenos, uh, of course DNS records, and all sorts of other you know pieces of infrastructure that you might you know find in a typical IT shop. Key to this is no manual intervention is required. This is fully automated. It's a scheduled job. Nobody has to go touch a button. It just runs every 15 minutes, looks at the state of the environment. If something needs to be done, it gets done. So let's take a look at that and what that looks like from an Ansible Tower perspective. If you've never used Tower, uh, what we're looking at right now is a workflow template. Workflow template is basically a collection of job templates. Job templates more or less are playbooks. Uh, for Autoscale, we use the workflow template that's on the screen right now. It includes all the playbooks that we need for either scaling up or scaling down resource. The first playbook that's going to run is simply going to ask for a list of nodes in the OpenShift cluster. Let's click on that. Once it gets these lists of nodes, it's going to do a Splunk search uh, uh, to determine how how much in the way of resources has been consumed on those nodes in terms of CPU requests and how much is available. And if this threshold goes above a certain threshold or below it, we'll scale up or scale down appropriately. The next playbook to run is scale up or scale down. Notice our extra variables. Scale up is false. Scale down is false. That means that our cluster is right sized. And so in this case, nothing actually gets done. There's no state that needs to change. 
So let's see what happens when we change the equation a bit and onboard a new application. What we're going to do now is we're going to create an example application. It's sort of kind of an extreme example to show exactly what happens when we start consuming resources at the OpenShift level. So we're going to create a boilerplate test project based on my MySQL cake PHP this time. Notice we're requesting a certain amount of memory and CPU as well as storage. Let's go ahead and click create there. And you can see that uh, per the boilerplate, the build is kicking off. So we're building our image. Notice Trident's provisioned our storage. This is exactly what we want. Now that our image is built, let's go ahead and scale up. Notice that each pod is requesting 500 millicores of CPU. We've got one replica right now. Let's see what happens in terms of our auto scale implementation when we scale that up to an extreme example. So let's say 50 replicas. So that's requesting 25 extra CPUs. Go ahead, say 25. And of course, we don't have the compute for all those pods. So we see these errors, uh, insufficient CPU. This is precisely what we're trying to avoid with auto scale. We don't want this error to be a showstopper for our end users. So now let's look at auto scale and its machinations. Once again, auto scale is going to be run. It's going to get a list of nodes. Once we have that list of nodes, we're going to do our Splunk query and see what uh, available CPU is relative to requested CPU. And if it's above a threshold, we should have a variable set called scale up, and that should be equal true. And notice the extra variables, indeed, scale up is now equal to true. So as a result, we're going to build two new nodes. And in this case, this is in our AWS environment. We also do this in HCI. So it works the same way there. First thing that we're going to do, and this process does take about 15 minutes, is we're going to bootstrap some VMs, create some DNS records. Then we're going to create some ServiceNow artifacts. And the, finish the bootstrapping of the node itself. So deploying Docker, setting the host name to be FQDM, starting the Docker service, upgrading all packages. Once all that stuff is done, we're going to actually bootstrap OpenShift itself using the standard Red Hat OpenShift playbooks for adding nodes into an already existing cluster. Once we do that, we're going to set some custom node labels. We're going to set some firewall rules up at IP tables to ensure that we can do things like SNMP monitoring. We're going to set up SNMP on the host itself so that we can monitor it with Xenos. Make sure that the device is actually present in Xenos, or rather the VM that we've just created, or VMs. We're going to kick off a ServiceNow discovery, set up some public keys. And then lastly, we're going to make sure that our export policy that's being used by Trident actually includes the nodes that we just created. We do this because we don't export to the world or a large subnet. We export volumes only to a very specific uh, IP or specific IPs, and that is the IPs of the machines that are actually in the cluster. So what was the result of this? So now you can see on the right-hand side, a bunch of pods are actually starting to spawn, whereas before they were stuck. They were pending, waiting for CPU. We still have some that are pending, waiting for CPU, given that we have an extreme example. But it doesn't matter. Auto scale will continue to build VMs until we are not over our capacity, until we are below that scale up threshold. So, what are the key takeaways here? Ansible is at the core of what we do with our Cloud One uh, program, uh, it's a powerful orchestration. Uh, solution, especially when you use the NetApp modules. Trident uh, allows us to deliver storage to containerized applications at the speed of business. And we've found that you know, we're able to use 
both tools in conjunction with each other for maximum effect. They both have areas, you know, where they operate, and they operate best. Uh, um, and so that we, we use each tool uh, uh, to its fullest extent. I'd like to invite you to uh, not only go out and try some of these NetApp modules, uh, it, not only in your uh, OpenShift uh, environment with Ansible, but uh, in your infrastructure as a service environment. Uh, we've got use cases there as well. Um, and there are other uh, uh, sessions uh, where that will be talked about in detail. But uh, go download Ansible, go try it out. It's an excellent orchestration tool. Uh, and I'd encourage everybody to uh, check it out and see what it could do for your business. Uh, we've been able to, with Ansible, uh, take what was a very manual process uh, where it would take somebody seeing these errors, like not having enough CPU, uh, and then manually pushing a button to go do it, or maybe even you know, a, a manual change request. And we've been able to shrink that hours or days process down to minutes. And so this is something that can benefit everybody. Go check out some of our other sessions, see the other ways that we're using Ansible, the other things that we're doing in terms of automation so that you too can benefit from this increased velocity uh, that you can get with automation. And before you go, please tell us what you, uh, what you think. Uh, we definitely value your feedback uh, and a survey should be coming your way.